through what you're like right now. You have to know that God is on his throne. Amen? Amen. Amen. It does not matter how much it hurts, how many tears you cry, how many people you lose. That's right. God is on his throne. And whatever happens, happens for a purpose. When somebody leaves, let them go. Yes. When somebody hurts you, turn the other cheek. That's right. It's for your good. That's right. If you love mm -hmm. and serve the Lord. Mm -hmm. David and I were talking <clears throat> the other night, <coughs> and I said to him, you know, I really feel like I'm wasting time on my job, <laughs> working. I really do. <laughs> when, when I go there, and, and okay, maybe this is bragging, but whatever, you'll get over it. I'm good at my job. Mm -hmm. I'm real good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I've been there a long time. And the operation goes very smoothly. And we have a new staff member who is phenomenal and takes on things that she, that other people don't. And so I really have less to do than I ever have. Thank you, Lord. Yes. But mm. now to the point at work where I'm like, mm -hmm. oh, I'm really wasting time here because I've got a whole bunch of stuff to do. <laughs> a whole bunch of stuff to do in my real job, which is this right and so every once in a while I it gets to be the afternoon and I'm saying well I'm just I'm not going to be here this afternoon because I, I really am not feeling well and I'm not mm -hmm. because I need to get to the work mm -hmm. and when I'm not with it I'm not well mm -hmm. and so I'm not lying I need to go home and get in the work and so I would ask that you join me in prayer Yes. That my time on my second job is limited. Mm -hmm. And I do know that there is something coming because as I, I can't share this with you right now, but I did share with David. There have been glimmers of mm -hmm. things coming. Right. Mm -hmm. So I ask you to pray with me because this is my job and this is my full-time job. Yes. Everything else is just secondary. Amen? Amen. Amen. And I said that to, to help you understand something today. And I'm going to... Take my time, and I'm, I'm going to leave some things out on purpose, and I'm going to um, add some things, but it's all to benefit you <coughs> for your understanding. Because if you are, if you are a saint, tell me what makes you a saint, anyone? That's a Christian. A saint is somebody who's saved, mm -hmm. right? Yes. We believe in our hearts and confess with our mouths that Jesus Christ is Lord, and you shall be saved. David. Simple, right? Yes. So if you are a saint, you have been given a ministry. What is a ministry? Office, your work for the Lord, your calling. Even if you haven't seen the full effect or you're not fully walking in it yet, you're being trained now for it. Even if you are walking in it, you are still being trained for times to come. Right. So what we have to get the mindset of is that our work is what you are called to do, is your ministry. Your work actually isn't what you get paid to do. Mm -hmm. Do we understand that? Mm -hmm. Make it simpler for me. Your work is whatever God has called you to do. Your work is not going to your paying job, whether it's at the school or at the grocery store or at the convenience store, wherever it is. That is not your work. Mm -mm. That's secondary. Mm -hmm. That's any work. Right. That's any work. That is something that God allows you to do and gives you money to do it. 
Because it's his money, right? Mm -hmm. He loans you the job and he loans you the, the money to pay the bills. Yes? Mm -hmm. Does everybody understand that? When we say our job, we often think, well, yeah, go on, go on to work Monday. Mm -hmm. We have to change that mindset mm -hmm. to this is our work. And we don't go to work. We should always be in our work. Amen? Amen. Amen. And so I said, I'm going to simplify this for you today, and I'm going to give you a little bit of background because we're actually going to go to Nehemiah today. Nehemiah was a prophet. That was his office. Mm -hmm. I'll give you all a minute. Anybody need help who's not getting help? How does that song go, Courtney? That the part of the song that we just sang about sinking? If uh, something was an ocean. If grace is an ocean, we're all sinking. If grace is an ocean, we're all sinking. Mm -hmm. Oh, I love that lyric. You ever have those love songs that, like, you and your partner like sing to each other, and there's one part of it that makes you go, oh, <laughs> it makes you melt. Mm -hmm. That's that in that song yes. for me. There's something mm -hmm. about that piece of it that just makes you like, oh, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because it's true. It mm -hmm. is true. Yeah? You good, Lily? Yeah. Okay. So Nehemiah operated as a prophet, mm -hmm. but he was the king's cupbearer. Mm -hmm. And I say this because you need to know that a king's cupbearer is somebody who tastes his, his wine before he drinks it to make sure it's not poisoned. Mm -hmm. And so really, in your kingdom, the most trusted person is your cupbearer. Right. And so Nehemiah went to his boss, the king, and asked if he could return to Jerusalem, his home, because it had been destroyed. <clears throat> and the reason that he wanted to go back was to rebuild the wall around Jerusalem. Now, understand that Jerusalem or any city at that time was walled for protection. It kept the enemies away. But previously, Babylon an enemy of Judah, and their king, Nebuchadnezzar, came in, and they destroyed and burned Jerusalem. And so here we have a city where people have left captivity in Babylon, and they're returning to... Now, I'm going to stop you there. If I go too fast, stop me if you need something. This is just simple background to bring you up to speed of where we're going today. And so Judah had been in captivity in Babylon for 70 years. King Cyrus issues a decree to let the people go, and the people start returning to Jerusalem. But it's destroyed. So imagine this. Imagine that you've been required to live in Bangor for 70 years, hmm. under the control of someone telling you what to do. After 70 years, they say, you can come back to Caribou and Fort Fairfield. You're free to go. But when you get back here, there's nothing left. Everything has either been destroyed or burned. Hmm. What would you do? Okay, you'd rebuild, start over. Would you feel despair or hopeless or, oh, 70, you have no money coming back? Most of your family isn't coming back with you. How would you feel? Overwhelmed. Over, yes, overwhelmed. Very good. If anybody has been through a fire and has lost their home and their possessions... We know that it's it's overwhelming. Yes. Where do I begin? Right? right? Yeah. It's a time of vulnerability. Mm -hmm. Right? Yes. It's a time when 
people come in to help, but really aren't there to help. They're there to get something for themselves out of it. Mm -hmm. Donna, can I use you for an example? We know Donna's home burnt three winters ago. Seven? Almost three years ago. Her home burnt, right? And so in that situation, she had to be very careful because when there's a fire and it's deemed accidental, generally there's an insurance payoff. Mm -hmm. And lots of times the insurance payoff is really big. And so at that time, Donna had to be careful to make sure that all of a sudden she didn't have all kinds of men asking her on dates or friends that weren't really friends. Can I help you? Let me do this. Because if you help, then later on, maybe she'll give me a little takeoff in her insurance payoff. Uh See how vulnerable she was and she needed wisdom to know who was there to help her and who wasn't. This was what was going on at the time of Nehemiah. Mm -hmm. Jerusalem was destroyed. The people felt overwhelmed. They felt hopeless. And the one thing that they needed more than anything was a wall of protection to stop people from invading their land. Are we good so far? Yes. As a prophet, which is Nehemiah, he actually was walking perfectly in his lane. Can I show you why? Yes. A prophet's job is to rebuild and to repair what's been torn down. Nehemiah went back to Jerusalem to rebuild and to repair what had been torn down. Mm-hmm. Let me go further. That's true. Because not I know I don't want well, a prophet. That's true. Not everybody is right. <laughs> but if you are a son, mm-hmm. if you are a son, and let me explain what a son is. How many of you in here would love to walk with the full power, all of it, that Jesus walked with when he was on this earth? Yes. Oh, oh my. Imagine not having to touch anything, right? But just being able to speak yes. to like, speak, it. speak to that and, and, and it's done. And it's mm-hmm. done. Right? Oh my. That's what being a son is. Mm-hmm. A son is the chosen who will walk with the full power that Jesus himself Mm -hmm. did. We're servants now because the sons haven't been revealed. But it's it's Romans 8, 19 and 20. And I'm not going to make you go to a whole lot of scriptures because I know there's a lot of you in here who who aren't used to that, but I'll give you the reference. It tells you that all of creation is waiting for the manifestation of sons. Mm. Right? So right now, we're a son by faith. I believe yes. I'm a son. Right. Oh, yes. I believe yes. that right. I'm going to walk as a son yes. right. in the fullness. Yes. Right. And it comes to pass in Revelation 12. Again, I'm not even going to go there today. Right. You just can mark that down. Right. But if you like the book of Revelation, <laughs> we have lots of books and teachings that Jerry and I have done. And you can find lots of information on it, and we can, we can give you one before you leave today. Free. With a lot of revelation. Mm-hmm. Yes. yes. All glory to God. Amen. And so, if you are a son, right? And then how many people in here say, I'm a son. 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 Guess what? If you are a son, the Bible teaches you how to live now for your sonship Later. That's right, brother. That's right. You can't live as a servant now That's if right. you're going to be a son. That's right. You have to live as a son. Am I right? right. Yeah. So if you are a son, you are a builder, mm-hmm. a repairer, mm-hmm. and a restorer. That's what the word yes. son means. That's right. Those are all things. That you don't just have to be a prophet to be called to do those things. If you are called to be a son, which you all said you are, Mm -hmm. you also have to be able to act as Nehemiah Mm -hmm. acted. Is everybody with me so far? Yes. So I'm going to ask you a question, and I want you to ponder this as we go through today. What are you building, and what are you building with? Mm -hmm. (coughs) What are you building And what are you building with? We're going to go to Nehemiah, the sixth chapter, and starting in verse 15. 
Can everybody smell the delicious food? You know why you can't? Because you can only smell what the rock is cooked. You know that? You know? Have you ever heard that saying? Can you smell what the rock is cooking? That's the Holy Ghost. This is what he cooked it. That's why you can't smell the regular food because you're smelling this right now. That's right. Yes. If we're there, say, let me build. Let me build. Verse 15 reads, So the wall was finished in the twenty and fifth day of the month of Elul in fifty and two days. I'm going to stop right there. We're not going to go to verse 16 yet. I want to break down verse 15 for you first to help you understand. This wall is what we've been talking about, and it is, it is a wall of protection is what it means. When it says the wall, it doesn't just mean the wall. It actually includes um, one, two, four towers and gates. And I'm just going to give you references. They're the Tower of Miha, the Tower of Hananiel, which is found in Nehemiah 3 and 1, the Tower of Furnaces, it's going to be on YouTube. Yes, it is. The Tower of, of Furnaces in Nehemiah 3 and 11. And the Tower that Lies Without, and that's Nehemiah 3 and 26. So it included towers, the gates that went into the wall, and the wall itself. Understand that the whole wall wasn't destroyed. Some parts were. So there are parts that were repaired, and there are parts that were totally rebuilt. The towers, why would they have to rebuild towers? Watchtowers. Two were watchtowers. That's where prophets sat to look out for dangerous things coming. Another one was how they cooked. The Tower of Furnaces was actually where they baked their bread. And so they needed, they needed those. Amen? It says that the wall of protection was finished, which is to be made safe <coughs> and made perfect. On the 25th day of Elul. Now, the 25th day of Elul is about September 9th on our civil calendar, just so you kind of have an idea um, of the time frame that we're talking about. It's August into September. And the month Elul means cry or outcry. So let me break down some, some numbers for you to help you understand this 25th day. Are we ready? The number 25 means forgiveness of sins. The number 20 means redemption. And the number 5 means grace. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to tie this all together for you, I promise. I just want you to have the information right now, and I'm trying to take my time. So on, so on September 9th, or the 25th of Elul, okay, 52 days after it was started, which would mean it probably started in the month of Av or Tamaz, depending on whether or not they observed the Sabbaths, and if you want more information on that, we can talk later. I'm going to jump over that part. The number 50 means Pentecost. Mm -hmm. What happens on Pentecost? The Holy Ghost is poured out. You, your Pentecost is the day that you receive your down payment of the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. The number two. Witness. Who's teaching here? The Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost. <laughs> witness. We're going we're gonna to go with witness. Okay? It means union and division also, but I want you to, to just use witness for today. So on the 25th of Elul, 
The wall was made perfect. Not just the wall, the wall of protection was made perfect in just 52 days. That's from start to finish. Do you understand that this wall spans like 32 acres? Okay, this isn't like, like, oh, we're just going to build a wall around here. This is huge. And so for this to have been done in 52 days was a total miracle in itself. For Nehemiah to be allowed to leave Persia, which is where he was, which was the controlling power at the time, okay, if he was allowed to leave Persia and the, as the right hand of the king mm. to go back, that's favor. Yes. That's another miracle in yes. itself. That's right. So here's what Nehemiah's work claims. Remember I said Elul meant cry or cry out, right? His work cried out as a what? A witness. His work cried out as a witness to the Holy Ghost or Pentecost. That's the number 52. It served as that voice crying in the wilderness. That's good. His redemption, his forgiveness of sins, and that by grace you are saved. That's the 25th and 52 days. That's what Nehemiah's work cried out, which means that's what your work mm -hmm. has to be a witness of. See, we're in the wilderness right now. Mm -hmm. Okay? Everybody look at me. Because some of you are like, what? I'm just going to wait till she's done because I don't know what she's talking about there. So maybe she'll skip that and not try to explain it. What does it mean when I say we're in the wilderness right now? Preparation. We're in training. Okay, the wilderness means rehearsal. We are in the sanctuary where we're led by the Holy Ghost. Right. This is a time when we get prepared for our sonship to walk in the fullness which will come later. Our work now has to be an outcry, a witness, crying out of what needs to come in your life. It is by grace that you are saved, not of works, so that any man shall boast. Grace. Here's what, can I tell you how tricky, how tricky things can be? For so many years, we all have believed that it took so much to be saved. Mm -hmm. Well, it can't just, okay, you can't tell me that I'm going to be <laughs> saved just by saying that I, that I believe that Jesus Christ is Lord and I confess my fault. You can't tell me that makes me saved. There's got to be more. I must have to do more, right? Mm -hmm. That's why it takes faith. That's how yeah. tricky the enemy is. You see that? Yeah. Well, there's going to be more that I have to do to get to that point. And so you come in and you think, well, I must have to do this, I must have to do this, and if I don't do this, then I won't be saved. But that's not what the Bible says. But that's what the enemy does, tricks you. That's right. So that you don't have an understanding of grace, nor do you have the faith to receive it. That's so true. Are you following me so far? Mm -hmm. Understand something. That your work has to be profitable for the kingdom. Yes. I can sum up everybody's work in here, no matter what ministry you have, with one sentence. Your work is to build the kingdom. Mm -hmm. Whether you're a teacher, an evangelist, a worship leader, whether you cook, whether you clean, your work is to build the kingdom. Mm -hmm. Let me give you an example. How does toilets build the kingdom? Well, let me be honest. If I come into a congregation and I have to use the bathroom, and I go to the bathroom, and the bathroom, the flush is dirty, I'm not coming back. Yeah. You can call it trivial, and you can call me high maintenance, whatever you want to do. That's me. So if you're clean and you're caring for what you have, yes, that's your work. That is building the kingdom. That's right. There is no job too small or too big here. 
Everybody's doing their part. As long as you're doing your part and not hers. What's profitable? What? God said I can't do her part. Exactly. That's not profitable. You can only be profitable when you're working your ministry. In your lane. In your lane. Understand that by building the key the kingdom, you're teaching people, one, they are saved by grace. Mm. Two, you've been redeemed by the blood. Three, forgiveness of sins are granted unto you so long as you ask with a sincere heart. And four, you need this wall of protection that's been built in Nehemiah. Mm. That wall of protection is the Holy Ghost. You have to have that to protect you. It's your protector. It's your guide. Right. It's your counselor. Right. It's your comforter. Right. It's your protection. That's your job. Mm. That's your work to build the kingdom. That's what Nehemiah was doing. And that's what his work cried out here. Mm. Let's look at verse 16. And it came to pass that when all our enemies had heard thereof, and all the heathen that were about us saw these things, they were much cast down in their own eyes, for they perceived that this ministry, that's the word work, was appointed or wrought of God. How many here believe that they are doing the work of the Lord? If you don't believe you are, then this part is not for you. Because I'm going to give you a warning. Mm -hmm. Two, two bewares. Mm -hmm. If you are doing the work of the Lord as Nehemiah did, the first thing that you need to be careful of is what you're building with. Mm -hmm. And the second thing you need to be aware of is that there will be enemies trying to stop your work. An enemy in secret. One that doesn't seem like an enemy. Yeah. One that's sitting right <laughs> among you. What better way to hinder you than to be sitting right beside you? From within. Something that's unexpected. Mm -hmm. If you are being prosperous for the kingdom, you should be being fought by the enemy. Yes. I, there used T.D. Jakes used to say years ago, and I love this. I love this saying; it always stuck with me. Stop blaming the devil for every problem in your life, right? Because you don't have enough of God in you to make the devil chase you. You know what that saying? Mm. You are not about your father's business, so why would the devil even bother with right. you? Right. Right. That's right. right. He has no business to bother. That's right. And that always stuck with me mm. as, a rem as a reminder in the back of my head. Mm -hmm. If you are not being fought by something, check where your work is at mm. or what you're building with. <coughs> we all understanding this so far? Yeah. Am I going slow enough for you? Yes. Let me show you something that happens with people who are among you that you think are our, our, our fellow um, friends, what's that? Laborers. Fellow laborers, that's a good way to put it. Oftentimes they come with, God told me to tell you. Because see, we think as, as, as Christians that we're going to get people to listen to us immediately if we say, God said. Yeah. When God has nothing with what you're saying. Mm. Well, God told me. Back it up. Back, back, back it up. up. With the word. That's right. That's right, Lily. Really? Are you equipped to go to Jerry and tell him what the Lord said? <laughs> no. Nope. Oh, no. no. Nope, you're not. Nope. And that's not bragging about him mm -mm. or anybody else. That's the order. Order. Right. If court. you see things that he doesn't see, either you're out of line or he's off his game. Yeah. 
Because if he doesn't see it, that means that means it's either not going to happen, or he hasn't been before the Lord like he needs to be. Mm -hmm. And we know here, all <laughs> glory to God, it's not because he's off his game. That's right. Yeah. Thank you, Father. Yes. Right? Yes. And so people come to you with, I think you should. I really feel. Yep, you do really feel, because it's you talking mm -hmm. and not God. Mm -hmm. Okay. Understand this. Not everybody here is a strong vessel. Mm -hmm. okay. We're vessels, we're bodies, right? Mm -hmm. right? Not everybody is a strong vessel. Yeah. Satan uses weak vessels to creep in and to disturb things. Right. Because strong vessels are going to notice Just like that. right off. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. A weak vessel is not. That's right. And you're not talking about body strength. No. No. We're talking spiritually. Right. Mm -hmm. Say that again, daughter. Silly women let astray. Silly women let astray. It's what happens. Mm -hmm. And so let me show you Nehemiah's enemies. And I can tell you they're going to be the same as your enemies. Mm -hmm. can I, can, may I add on to Of course. Okay, let me add on to what she said to back it up uh, with Scripture because she's right on point. And Donna ran with it even yes. further. Because right now, you could believe somebody in here saying, because I done heard it, and it's a warning. Because it's always a woman that uh, uh, rebels against God's word. Mm -hmm. That's from Genesis. From That's right. It wasn't Adam. All the way to the end. All the way to Revelation. That's right. It's always going to be a woman. Yeah. And ladies, I ain't beating you down. And then the thing about it is this. A woman find the weakest man to get on her side. Mm -hmm. Or... They, they call and say, Child, you heard what happened today in service. What you think about that? See, see, because if you're truly anointed, you will take on the mob by yourself. <laughs> but if you're not anointed, you need a whole bunch of people in your corner. Because your strength is dependent upon the people instead of God. If you are anointed, you will face the whole crowd only with the anointed, with the anointing, because you outnumber the crowd. Right. That's why God said, don't number the people. Right. Mm -hmm. The song says, sometimes I feel like Joe broken asunder, <laughs> shaken to pieces, set up mm -hmm. for the mob. Mm -hmm. That's alone. Mm -hmm. yeah. Facing all your enemies. Yes. That's right. Because you're equipped to do it. Yes. Yes. Well, friends, right? Nehemiah, I don't even turn there, okay, because I, I don't want you it just to distract you, but Nehemiah chapter 2 and verse 19 shows you three of Nehemiah's enemies. The first one is Sanballat. Hmm. Do you know what his name means? Enemy in secret. <laughs> Did you say two Nehemiah 2.19. His name means enemy in secret. That's somebody hiding among you. His name also means bramble bush. A bramble bush looks very beautiful, right? It's spectacular in color. Until you go and touch it and it stabs you. That's your enemy in secret. Because it's thorny. And you can't see the thorns until you grab hold of it. understand something that one of the number one reasons that people come against other people and I taught on this is jealousy. Yes. Tammy, your nails look great by the way. Is jealousy. <laughs> jealousy causes us to desire what somebody else has. Well, she can do that, so can I do it. Mm -hmm. Right? God choose her, he choose me too. Well, I know that they just spent $500 putting that together, together, but I would have done it this way. Nobody asked you. That's right. That's right. God didn't tell you to do it, and I didn't ask you how to do it. So, zip it. That's right. That's 
You can think all those things in your head, but right. for, to, to protect yourself, don't let it fly out of your mouth. Yes. Right. Get it? Mm. Just don't let it come out. Zip that. Yes. That's his enemy and secret. The second one was Tobiah. His name actually means the Lord is good. So you think, well, how does that fit in there? Tobiah was the servant of Sanballat. So his Lord was Sanballat. Mm -hmm. Not God as we think. Right. So he followed his master's orders. There's the crowd that Jerry was talking about. The mob. Mm -hmm. The, I'm going to call Lily, who's going to call Judy, who's going to call Stacy, who's going to call Courtney, mm -hmm. to talk about the service and how that wasn't God in there. That's how we set up our friends. Mm -hmm. The third one was Jeshem. And his name means rain or shower. Symbolic of the Holy Ghost. I said, they will come to you and say, God told me. When he did. If there's real anointings, there is false anointings. Yes. Yeah, with evil reports. If there's true sonship, there is false sonship, which is called sons of perdition or destruction. Mm. You can be a son just on the wrong side of the tracks, right? I said that, okay, we'll skip, I'm, I'm going to wrap it up for you, okay? One of the things I said that causes a lot of problems between saints is jealousy, right? Mm -hmm. The enemy within, the one that sits right next to you. The one that tells you how to do things when they don't have a clue themselves because they want the position that you're in. You know, they may not even want your position. They may just not want you in a position. That's right. That's right. See, you know what true friends do? They encourage one another. They celebrate you. They celebrate. They lift right. you up. That's right. Yeah. They don't subdue you and push you right. down. Right. Or stab in the back. Or what? Or stab in the back. That's, That's right. True. That's They're very true. Mm -hmm. Yes. Because if I have an issue with you, I'm going to tell you. That's right. right. And it's not because I like confrontation, although I do enjoy it. <laughs> to be quite honest. It's because... <laughs> Dad's always saying, oh, God, I hope Erica didn't just read that. <laughs> yeah, he oh, does. No, no, she can't go with this. He does. <laughs> Got it. You're going with it. Yep. Uh, I confront you because I love you. Yes. yes. And the Bible tells me that if anybody has awe against their brother, to leave their offering down at the altar and go make it right first. Right. So I confront you or I, okay, look, I want to talk with you. Right. Because I want to get it right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. For me, for you, and for our future. Right. And for right. everybody for else. Body. For the whole body. That's right. That's right? right. Okay, so. Some of the reason that, that this happens is because of jealousy. Some of it is because they want to build. Because remember, you're a builder, right? Right. Mm -hmm. But they don't know what to build with. Mm. Okay. So let me show you what the wall was built with. The wall was built with white stone. Mm. Mm. I'm going to skip that part tonight or today. <laughs> That's what it was built with, white stone. Yeah. <coughs> we build with the stone the builders rejected. Yes. Which has become the chief of the corner. Jesus is Jesus Christ, which is the word. 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 Yes, word. you're right. right. He's the chief cornerstone. The word. Our foundation is Jesus Christ. That's the word. That's how we build. Mm -hmm. That's what Satan is after. Yes. Mm. He don't want us to have any of Jesus at all. Right. But here's what happens when people are are, are envious of positions. And they don't know how to build. They build with bricks. Mm -hmm. Bricks are symbolic of servitude, bondage. servitude 
bondage and idolatry. Because the word brick actually means to be white. Mm. Remember, it was white stone right. that the walls built with. Right. Or whitewashed. Why ye marvel? For Satan himself disguises himself as an angel of light or white. Your brick can be white, but it's still a brick. Mm -hmm. You're building with the wrong things. Let me give you an example to help you understand the brick. I do not work this ministry because I get paid. Right. That's, right. That's right. I am not a hireling. That's right. That means you cannot buy me. That's right. I, and, and David can attest this, and Jerry, mm -hmm. I did this for years with nothing. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Right. Okay? A hireling says, I'll do this if, if you pay me. Pay. Your brick, your God, your idol, is money. money. That's right. That's the first brick for you That's to build right. your tower That's with. Right. That's right. That's not That's right. Right. Do you see the difference between the white stone right. and the brick? Yeah. See, people who want a position don't know how to build. Yeah. And they don't know what to build with because, because God has not placed them in that position yet. Mm -hmm. See, I can teach you how to build and I can teach you what to be to build with. But until you show yourself faithful and little, yes. God can't give you much. Right. That's right. That's right. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let me help you understand. I'm going to stop here. I, 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 I'm just going to stop. The Tower of Babel from Genesis, Genesis 11 was built with bricks. That's mm -hmm. true. Symbolic of idolatry. Mm -hmm. Understand, bondage. yet in bondage, it's confusion. Yes, all day long. Understand that bricks fall. Yes, the tower fell. Yeah. Isaiah nine and ten tells mm -hmm. us that the bricks have fallen. Oh. That's right. Yes. You can't build. Well, you can. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> The only building that cannot be blown down by the big bad wolf is one made of white stone. Mm -hmm. That's how you have to build. Mm -hmm. It can't be bricks. <coughs> Are you all understanding me today? Anything that you... And under, okay, I, I'll, I did forget that. Anything that you put before God mm -hmm. is an idol. Okay, oh, yeah. I, I want to back up and say that for the new people that it doesn't necessarily have to be anything bad either. It can be a, something as simple as going to the movies. If you put that before God, it's an idol for you. Mm -hmm. You do your work first, first. then you play. Right. That's then right. You and so every time we work thinking oh, I'm going to do this, and then I'll get recognized, or I'm going to do this. It's another brick. Mm -hmm. it's not to be and the more you do that, the higher your tower gets. And the higher the tower gets, the harder it's going to fall. Yeah, well, it crashed. And it's going to fall. Mm. Build with white stone. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. Yeah. David? I didn't totally agree. I was just going to say that, that part of their whole scheme of things was to build a name for themselves. Yes. Mm -hmm. the so who's the idol? Themselves. themselves. Yeah. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. That was good. Check this one out. Yeah, I'm on the fossil. Yeah, shut it down. Let me 